Then I got closer to the Chicos, Bobby the Chico, Georgia the Chico. And on Tuesday nights, I would go to Sammy's Club Pally's, the bar. Right. Right. 15 years and, old. And, and I'm sure there's some kind of picture of us walking in or out or something. Because when we went there, all the wise guys were there. Uh, and every Tuesday night, he had a gathering there for his group exactly. and for the Gambino family. Okay. And also, you know, I know Sammy don't remember me when I was a kid, but that's when I was close with the Chicos. And then on Thursday, Sonny Giuliani used to have a gathering in Cropsey Lounge on Cropsey Avenue on Thursday nights. And I remember Hank the Bank being there, a couple guys from different families, and they would make fun of Hank the Bank the way he used to eat. I mean, he used to have like four plates in front of him. Yeah. But uh, how about Gas Pipe? What can you tell us about Gas Pipe? How was he? I know he, look, I know he was a psycho. I mean, Gas Pipe, uh, he was very polite to us, you know? I mean, we didn't do nothing to him. And, and in, in the situation that he was in, he had no reason not to be polite to us. You know, um, he was a wealth, a wealth of information. He talked about guys that I never heard of in my life. And, you know, turns out those guys that he talked about were some mad, mad hatters. And I don't think, like you, me and you have spoken about some of the names that he has mentioned that you knew who they were. Yeah. Some of those names, I, I didn't know who they were. They were doing murders with gas pipe down in Florida. Uh, they they were involved, they were guys that were involved in the French Connection. Um, there were, were guys involved in the French Connection. Uh, they were involved, there were guys that were involved in the French Connection. Um, there were, there were guys involved in the French Connection. Uh, they were involved, there were guys that were involved in the French Connection. Um, there were, there were guys involved in the French Connection. Uh, there was a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of things about him. I mean, he, but with the information that he brought forward, uh, it, it's almost like he was making it up, but he wasn't, you know what I mean? The stories were real, the plays were real, and, uh, in the street, he had like no tomorrow, you know, I mean, people were, were, were afraid of him, you know, um, he, Double Cross, Danny and John, um, Gotti, uh, you know, with Chin, relative to Castellano murder. Uh, you know, he was playing both ends of the fence, and he was involved in, uh, he was not for that life. He was on, you know, he, he let Sammy and John Gotti believe that the Daisy family, you know, were okay with the killing Castellano off the record. They weren't, and they were killing off all of, it was with a mob pass coming, they were killing off all of, all of uh, the Gambino family's main, you know, guys. They killed that, you know, Eddie Lino, Bobby Borriello. Uh, he was there in prison and they, they blew Frankie the Chico out, you know, and he brought Frankie Park, which now got him to get the park and managed to brown fight out his club. Yeah. So he was trying to get rid of, and, you know, he, they also sat on, the mob cops also sat on Sammy two or three times. There was just so many people around Sammy at the point for them to kill him. But they were trying to get rid of all the real powerhouse men had it in the Gambino crew because they wanted John. You know, they wanted him vulnerable, they wanted anybody strong enough to come back at them, you know, so. Gas was the one that was killing everybody. What Chin was involved, but Gas was the one instrumental in, in pointing everybody in the direction of killing. How, to your knowledge, how smart and clever was the Chin? I mean, you know, <laughs> he was he was extremely smart. John was on the cover of Pie magazine. Uh, you know, the, the, at that time, the two thousand dollars suits, pies, the haircuts every day, the burger at fish club. Uh, you know, he he just basically put, might as well just put a sign on his back and said, "Boston again, you know, crime fan." So you look at a guy like him, and then you look at a guy like Carlo Gambino. Who would walk around with wrinkled shirts and wrinkled pants, and he just looked like a quiet old man. But all he had to do was give a nod, and somebody would die. You know, two completely. It's supposed to be a secret organization. You know, it's not supposed to be broadcast. And basically, John Gotti broadcast who he was, and he literally stated, and he didn't give a shit because he didn't, he wasn't going to hide who he was. But it wasn't about him. You know what I'm saying? There, there, there were certain things about you know that life that was supposed to keep a secret. The one thing I'm going to say about him, I mean, he played chess with Sammy and Sammy checkmate. So. But the one thing I will say about him is that he had balls and he was a legitimate bona fide tough guy, you know, and in the street, you know, not just in the street, in any walk of life, people respect whether they want to admit it or not, respect balls, respect guts, respect heart, you know, and that, you can't, you know, give credit where it's due. The guy, I think he was foolish in the way he handled things. Um, the balls that it took to take out Castellano and, and go home and go to sleep back. I had this conversation when I was away with him in prison. He said, the conversation started, I don't know how, but he said, till this day, he said, I don't know why Frankie the Chico uh, set up Paul Castellano because Frankie the Chico had a good position already, you know? So, I don't know, you're knowledgeable with this stuff. So what do you think about that? Well, the story goes like this. Um, there was a lot of things that Paul Castellano was doing and I won't say anything bad because I know it's less family out there. Um, but there was a lot of things that he was doing that uh, the higher ups at that time, the cash, strong captains and everything, didn't, didn't really appreciate or didn't think it was becoming of a mob boss, especially the strongest mob boss in the five families at that time. And he wasn't sharing the wealth, you know? 
he was, you know, there were guys that were struggling, that, were, that you know, that, that were like straight to make a dollar, and he's living in what they call the White House on Bone Hill. So he wasn't giving people the right, you know, chance to earn or make, make money like they wanted to. Um, and when Angelo Ruggiero is the one that goes and approaches Sammy about killing, being involved in the murder of the Castellano murder, and Sammy's actually the one that plans that murder. He plans those jackets, the hats, everything. That's Sammy's idea on, on orchestrating the whole thing. Most of the guys in on that hit didn't know who they were going to kill until they got to Lower Manhattan. But, um, he told Ruggiero that uh, I'm not saying anything. You know, I'm going to speak to Frank. And him and Frankie had a long, deep conversation about it. And they did time together too, back in the day. Yeah, and Sammy and Frankie were very, Sammy and Frankie were very close. And Sammy respected Frankie and Chico. And the, you know, the agents that I know investigated Frankie and Chico, uh, very respectful relationship between them. You know, he, very, he wasn't, you know, he knew what the game was, they were only doing their job. He's a very respectful guy in law enforcement. And I'm talking about agents that they don't make them like that. Um, and uh, Frankie and Sammy, uh, Figured that, you know, after talking, I don't know what the conversation was about, but it was a good idea, and they were going to join forces with John to take him out. But Frankie also had a clause with Sam that would give him a chance. He, he said that I could be his underboss, but he could never be mine. You know, because I think Sammy had asked him, why don't you become the boss? And that was Frankie and Chico's answer. But the clause was, we'll give him a chance, and if we don't think he's doing the right thing and we end up with another form, we'll take him out. I'll be the boss, me and Frankie, and Sammy will be my underboss. But that never was able to materialize, and I think Frankie the Chico probably would kill John Barry. You know, yeah. um, because Frankie the Chico was—he's uh, like third generation gangster, and he was—he was, he was, you know, about keeping a low profile. You know, he wasn't a you know, boy guy. You know what I'm saying? He just was a towering figure, but he wasn't out there trying to make it like who, you know, who he was. Yeah. Well, how about the mob today? What do you think about the mob today compared to how the mob was 30 well, years ago? But let's let's face it. Uh, back going back to 1936 when Lucky Luciano started, there, there was a mob before that. I mean, you go back to the early 1800s, late 1800s, back in the woods in Lower Manhattan, you know, uh, Cherry Street, all around there. You had Monkey Smith, you had all kinds of gangs, you know. Uh, and then Lucky Luciano came up with the idea of, you know, family and commission and uh, council and all of that. Um, and back in those days, if you, if you want to go back a little, you know, go a little ahead of the game, I mean, you had guys like Carlos Marcello, Sam Giaconda, uh, they actually, you know, they, they, they got presidents into office, you know. I mean, these guys, you know, Maya Lansky uh, was approached by the CIA, uh, was instrumental in getting Lucky Luciano pardoned. He had to be deported, but got him out of jail uh, because he was able to infiltrate and have people um, down the docks, he controlled the docks. He was also give, able to give them a layout of certain things in Sicily during World War II. Uh, and there was, was Maya Lansky was open to it. So, you know, the government at times have time to organize crime to, uh, to help, and they did help. You know, they had the power to help. Try going to ask them for a reservation in a restaurant today. You know, that's the difference. There's, I don't think, you know, back then, whether, no matter, no matter what you want to say, everything was mob controlled. You know, you wanted to lay concrete, they were getting a dollar a square foot. You wanted to put a window in, they were getting a dollar a window. You wanted to, well, everything, me, you name it, they controlled it. And let's face it, it takes power to do that. You know, they control the unions. Uh, Nicky Scarfo, all he had to do was snap his finger, Atlantic City would shut down. You know. Uh, it, it, there was power that they reigned. I mean, Sammy was involved in, in, in major construction, but he didn't do shit jobs, you know. He did good work, like the buildings that he built. Uh, you know, he didn't use cheap concrete. He, didn't, you know, he wanted to do good work. He was just smart in excavation, smart in drywall. Like I said, there are still, I'm sure, guys out there today that have some things, some smarts behind them. But, you know, the rest of these guys out there today, they're idiots. You know, they're, they're total idiots. And you know what? The, you see what happens. You see what happens to guys in the court of jail, and what that life leads in the treachery. You see what goes on. They read about it. They watch these things more than me and you do. You know, Jerry Capizzi's articles is like they, they can't wait for it comes out to read or used to read because there's really nothing to write about it anymore. But uh, where are you? Where are you going? You know, where is that life taking? You know, go get a freaking job. You know, get a W two hanging out of your pocket. You know, mind your business and just lead a normal life. You know, it's a, it's a, it's not the smartest thing to get involved in that life, especially today. Years ago, guys came from bad neighborhoods. So going to, go, go to jail sometimes was like almost uh, an improvement for their lifestyle. So it didn't matter, you know. But you look at some of these guys today who get involved, there's no reason for them to get involved. You know, none whatsoever. And they do because, you know, and half of them play like they're tough guys and three quarters of them couldn't fight their way out of a paper bag. So that's my opinion.